Welcome back, folks. Well, today, guess what? I'm going to test band elongation. I'm going to explain to it how I have interpreted it after watching videos. This is not a new concept. This is a concept that has been covered over and over and over, but I want to do it in my own terms just to kind of keep it relevant on YouTube for all you new shooters out there. What I'm going to do in this video here is I'm going to take some latex from Omega Slings, 0.4, I'm gonna test the elongation or the stretch factor of it, see what the maximum is, and then I'm gonna cut some straight bands and I'm gonna shoot it through the crony and see what kind of speeds change with each percentage of elongation. Stay tuned. I'll give you a quick rundown of how I'm gonna test this, okay? Just so we have a guideline here. What I'm gonna use is eight millimeter steel ammunition. I'm gonna use 0.4 electric white Omega slings latex. All my bands today are going to be cut at 12 millimeter straight cuts. The reason I chose that is I wanted to remove the whole variable of tapers. I don't want to throw tapers into the mix. I want straight cuts. All right, so I have 10 millimeters marked off between these two dots. These two dots are going to elongate as I pull this thing. So what I'm going to do is try and center the center of that elongation on either end of the spectrum. And then we're going to take a, a measurement to see how far out it is. Uh, I am going to pull this pretty hard, so let's see. This is just, uh, what do we call it, uh, in-garage scientific lab testing. So let's go here, all right? So let's pull it out. I'm going to measure this down to like the center of the two. I'm going to yank the snot out of it. So that has elongated down. The dot has turned into a long dash kind of thing. But I'm going to try and center it. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, five six seven and a half so i'm going to say that we can probably get 750 percent elongation so we're getting about a 750 percent elongation based on that bench test over there now is that going to change when you actually put it onto a slingshot are you going to be able to get a little bit farther i think i might be able to get this to 800 percent when it actually bottoms out but that's why i'm going to test it on a slingshot with some straight cuts now, if you're brand new to this, the way that you figure out your elongation or the way I figure it out is I take my draw length and then I divide it. So my draw length is 736 millimeters. Divide that by five, I'm going to get 500% elongation. That's going to equal about 147 um, active band length, 147 millimeters active band length. From the pouch to the uh, slingshot attachment, 147 will equal about 500% elongation. 600 would be about um, 123. I have it all written down over there because I can't remember. 700% uh, would be about 105, and 800% would be 92 millimeters. So let's take some bottom line measurements at 500%, and then let's go all the way up until it maxes or snaps or something. Who knows? And then let's see what the chronograph actually has to say about it. I have one right there. I'm going to reposition the camera a little bit. And we're going to get to shooting. To save a little time, I will fast forward some of this stuff because I know that part of it gets pretty boring. But this is part of testing. So I have 10 shots here. Just going to get a baseline here. I'm going to shoot short draw at my regular face anchor. And we're going to take 10 shots and see what our average is. We averaged about 155 with 500% elongation. So 155 approximately average with 500% elongation. Let's bump it up to 600 and see what happens. We're at 600% elongation now. Let's see what this one does. Any guesses how fast, how much faster it's going to go? We are about to find out. Okay, it bumped it up to 172 average. Let's move on to 700%. 700% elongation. Let's see how much speed, if any, we're gonna gain, hopefully some. Is it gonna be a big jump like the first one or is it gonna be about the same? Let's find out. All right, came up a little bit, uh, not much though. I'm gonna put an 800% elongation on there um, and we'll see if they snap or what happens, but I think that's gonna be a max elongation. Let's get those banded up and see what happens. 
800% elongation, these tiny little bands. Uh, I, I am wearing safety glasses because I really don't want to take one to the eye. I don't know, man. If that let loose, maybe it would slap you. It'd probably hit you like right here, but why not, right? So we're at 800% elongation. Uh, I think I have my clips secured about as tight as they're going to go. Um, and I think we're going to hit a bottom out here, but I don't know the speeds. I'm going to give it like a test pull just to see. I think I can push it out to 800 here. Well... Here goes nothing, guys. Hopefully my knots hold. Yeah, we're definitely maxed out. And look. Didn't even change much. Let me see if I can get it back pulled a little bit farther. I wasn't quite to my anchor. Oh, there we go. Now, now I'm at my anchor. I'm going to talk through this one a little bit. It's not going to be as fast. Sorry. So we did come up. 183. 184. So we're in the lower 180s at 800% elongation. I find this kind of stuff interesting. As a slingshot shooter, it's kind of cool to learn how um, elastic performs and what you can actually get out of each individual piece. Each piece is going to be different. So no matter what you get, whatever you choose, you can always check your elongation uh, by doing a bench test sort of thing. It's going to give you a rough idea of your maximum stretch ratio. On the bench over there, it was showing me about 750%. All sorts of variables involved. Um, if you measure with a little thinner or thicker piece of latex on the bench, maybe it would get you, give you a different result. But what that translated to in reality on a slingshot is I was able to achieve 800% elongation. The swing um, from 500 to 800%, we went from 155 average to about 182 average. So... <clears throat> There is a difference, obviously, you know, shorter bands uh, stretched farther is going to equal more speed. It's kind of a, not as much of a change between the 600 and 700%, um, but as we got up to the 800, it started getting a little bit bigger of a jump there. If you shoot long draw, if you shoot different ammo, if you shoot in hotter temperatures. The ambient temperature here today is uh, in the garage is 50. It's negative three outside with, without the wind chill. It's brutal out there. Um, so I can only get my garage up to about 50 degrees. Uh, what I'm getting at is it's fun for me to learn. I, I like to learn and I like to see how these things perform and what they do. Uh, it's cool to understand your hobby or your sport, whatever you want to call it. Um, and understand how you can adjust things to make them suit and fit your needs. I left tapers out of the situation, and I wasn't trying to tune or achieve my maximum performance band. I was just wanting to see the swing. And now we know from 500 to 800% what kind of speed variables uh, or what kind of speed distance or gap you have between those two. I do want to do one more test, though. So hold on. So I put the 500% elongation bands back on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull them back and bottom them out. And I'm going to see where the speeds go to. Because you have to keep in mind, this testing was all done with short draw. But there is a, a whole mob of you guys that shoot long draw. Long draw is a whole different story here, guys. Because you don't have an anchor. You can go you know, here, 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 full butterfly, whatever you want. So I'm going to take this 500% elongation. Uh, and I'm going to pull them back until they bottom out. Hopefully they don't come unattached. And we're going to see... Uh, what kind of speed um, that would do because now you have more ela elastic uh, more latex contracting um, at a farther pull so let's see what that bumps us up, up to and hope and pray that nothing comes loose so 215 there you go still not fast but you can see the how much of a difference it is So we went up, what is that, 55, 155 to 217. 60 feet per second, about higher. So food for thought. If you are a short draw guy, short draw guy and you're like, oh man, I want to get fast and speeds and blah, blah, blah. 
You don't always have to just get some really stout bands or anything. When I first started, I thought thicker, stronger, faster. That's not always the case. You may want to switch over to pulling back a little bit past your anchor, farther and farther, because you can get some crazy speeds with super light poles, super thin latex shooting long draw. Just a thought. If you want to try that, there's lots of videos for that. I'm not a long draw shooter. I know how to, I just don't choose to. Thank you for watching. I enjoy doing this kind of test. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, um, like and subscribe, or at least maybe watch a few more. Thank you.